Well, what we, so what we're going to do is rotate <coughs> everything before we rotated perpendicular to our axis. So our cross sections were perpendicular. So they rotate into either disks or uh, annulus. I guess you call it like a CDU with a hole in the middle. Uh, the proper name is annulus. Uh, what we're going to do now is slice up in a different way. So we have our standard axis, x, y. I'll just draw the last. Uh, shape that we rotated and we'll rotate about the uh, y-axis again. So I think this is either last problem or second or last problem look just like this. The big difference that we're going to have is our cross sections, we're going to choose them to be parallel to our rotation axis and that is significantly different than what we had before. All right, what will this revolve into? I think I've alluded to this before, but if you have a good visual uh, thinking mind, what is this cross section going to rotate into? What's that? No, it won't quite. It's be a cylinder, it? It'll be a cylinder, yeah. So it'll just think about your pen and just move it. Oh. It'll, you know, rotate it. I don't know the best way to describe yeah, this. The way I'm rotating right now, which you can't see on the video, but. <laughs> like, bring your pen around the, your coffee cup or something. Oh, there we go. R rotate your pen around your coffee cup. That works. All right. <clears throat> so I'll draw what that turns into. All right. When we were looking at our rotated cross section, what measurement were we taking? We, we were taking a couple measurements, but what were we trying to figure out about that cross section back when we had donuts? We're trying to get area, basically. So the area of one side, or you could think about half the surface area, or just what's the area of that uh, rotated shape. So we're still going to be looking for area, but now it's area of the cylinder. Remember, there's no top and bottom, so this is just a area of the, I guess I could shade that in, although it's going to look really bad. But this is the vertical, area on the vertical single face. Not, we're not counting the lid or the bottom, all right? So those are not included in the area. All right, what's the area of a cylinder? It's kind of tricky, we don't usually think. So it's basically the circumference of the base, not the area of the base, circumference of the base times the height. If I wanted the, the entire volume, it would be area of the base time site, but I want circumference. Oh, I want surface area, so we're going to go circumference times height. So I'm going to cross out the word surface area, because it's usually if I drew this shape and said surface area, I'd be counting the top and bottom as well. But I'm just talking about the area of the vertical side. Area equals circumference. times height. All right, what is circumference? If I had a radius, so if I have a radius, what is the circumference? 2 pi r. 2 pi r. So another way to figure this out, it's got some circleness, so it's got a pi. And circumference is actually a one-dimensional measurement. And it's basically a length that's not straight. So circumference is one dimensional measurement, which is why it's not r squared or r cubed. And then the only question is, how did that number get there? Um, basically, it's the way pi is defined, is why that number's there, uh, times h. So it's 2 pi r h. OK. So our volume is pretty easy to write down. Integral from some a to some b, 2 pi r h. And 2 pi is constant, so we'll bring that outside. So there is the volume we're going to use. Just like before, you need to know do you have a dx integral or a dy integral? 
So let's think about the picture I drew, and is this a dx or dy integral the way I drew it? So if that's your weird shape windshield, do you change your x-coordinate or y-coordinate to squeegee with this? So change your x-coordinate. So the way I drew it, this is going to be an x-integral or a dx-integral. So <clears throat> if I try to squeegee my region, if I had the exact same setup, let's see if I can copy paste. Nope. Maybe I can't copy paste. All right, I'll redraw the same thing. Rotate same way, get the same volume. This is a dx or dy integral if I set it up like this. This is a dy integral. And if I rotated, the shape I would get is an annulus. And that would be a very different area. That would be the uh, pi r squared. Uh, or pi r, big R squared minus little r squared. All right, so this is before. This is how we did 6-1 uh, with disks. All right, so that was the good old days. So I just wanted to relate what we did before to what we're doing now. So if you just change a cross section to uh, the other direction, you're going to be either going from disk to cylinder or cylinder to disk. All right, so you need to know which one you're using because it's going to have very different volume uh, integral to find that volume. So we'll do some examples here. Uh, you are going to use the cylinder method for every problem in this section. So you could solve most of these with the disk method, but I don't want you to. I want you to go with cylinder. So we got region bounded by y equals square root x, y equals 0, x equals 4, about, uh, rotate about. about y axis. All right, same first step. Sketch a region out and a cross section. So go ahead, do that, those steps first. Sketch the region and a cross section. And be careful about how you draw your cross section because you want to make sure you get a shell when you revolve, not a disk. So let's, <clears throat> let's worry about those at the end when we get there. All right, so I drew what the revolve cylinder would be. And I start out with blue, so I just use my alternative color for my cross section. All right, any questions about that? It should be pretty straightforward. DX or DY integral? DX. So we got to change our X coordinate to clean the window. All right, so once we know DX integral, let's find the uh, surface area. So I need an R of X and an H of X function. Good news is big minus small pretty much works forever. All 
All right, so here's where things get a little bit tricky. I will draw my radius in on my revolved region. There's R of X. All right, now I'm gonna take that R of X measurement up to the original. So there's R of X down there. You know what, let's go with purple here. Make it stand out. All right, so that purple measurement is R of X. The green measurement that's already there is H of X. All right, so any questions about those two measurements back on the original? What made you choose that cross section? Did you just put it there? Uh, so I had to choose, <clears throat> if I wanted a cylinder, I have to choose a vertical cross section. So I, I could put it anywhere, basically anywhere in there, I could have marked it. So I just, I pick a point that's generally near the middle. I just don't try to like slam it way over into one corner or something. All right, so we got a height, a radius. All right, so all we need to do is figure out what these are. All right, so we'll do the uh, radius first. Big minus small. Let's, let's do the small first. What is the small? Zero. So we're about the axis, so our small is going to be zero. What is big? That's going to be a little bit tricky. It's hard to think about the first time. It's just x. So whatever x value I'm at at the moment, that is the big. So that can be a little tricky at first. All right, so big minus small is just x. So r of x is x. What about the height? Let's do the bit. Uh, what's the small height? It's also zero. You don't need to preface all your questions with that. <laughs> so that's good. That is a good question. All right, so let's think about the interval we're going to integrate across. So we all agree this is an x integral, right? So when I go to set it up, I was going to avoid this for a minute, but when I go to set this up, so we got rx, h of x, dx, what are my beginning and ending x values? So we're going 0 to 4. Uh, I have R of X already, we're just trying to get H of X, but <clears throat> so let's think about this point right here. I'm talking about that point right there. What are the coordinates? So we're using X from zero to two, or zero to four, so the coordinates are X comma zero. So whatever X value that we're on at that moment while we're integrating, that's that's the x value on the graph right there. Yes, I do know. The only thing I know is going to be between 0 and 4. Yeah. Uh, so if you have on the y axis and it's vertical, it would just be y of 0? Yeah, so if, if our cross sections were uh, horizontal, this would just be this point up here, the max would just be y. Ah. Uh, give me a good idea. All right, I could call this point, uh, the standard way to call it is x comma, the function we're on is square root of x. That would be x comma y. Right, that would be one way to think about this point. Uh, so when I'm thinking about big minus small for the height, I want to use the y coordinate up there, not the x coordinate. Does that make sense? Okay, so, and what's, of course, what's the y coordinate down at the bottom? It's already written on the board. We're using that zero, the y coordinate there. So that's why it's square root x minus zero. So it's the difference of the y coordinates. Yeah, how did you know that the, that was the base? So I'm just matching up the y coordinates right here. So I got 
a big y coordinate and a small y coordinate. So it's, now these all have to be in, in, in a function of x. So it would not be OK to just call this y. Does that make sense? Uh, so the similar, this may answer your previous question a little better. What were we doing before? We were going from, wow, that got a little too wide. We're going from 0, 0 to x0, right? So now I'm going back to the radius. So we're going to rethink about that. Which coordinate am I using at the origin? To, uh, so which of the coordinates, which 0 am I using, the 0 for x or 0 for y, when I want to measure r? Yeah, I'm using the x coordinate there. And then which of these two coordinates am I using when I'm trying to measure the uh, radius? Yeah, so I want, basically I'm, I'm taking an x axis, a measurement in the x direction. So I need to use the x coordinates. Okay. So that's why I'm going with x and 0. Does that answer your question better? So. Here, the purple, the radius, is a horizontal measure, so we're comparing x coordinates. The uh, height is a y measure, so we're going to compare y coordinates. Now, the other issue is they're not at the same point, so that's why I drew out kind of all three points right here, so we could carefully match up coordinates. It also makes sense because the x coordinate goes twice as much as the y coordinate goes, right? Uh, well, they have a square root or a square relationship, not, not a double relationship. But yeah, so if I had a vertical cross section, I'd have to write all these points out in terms of y's, not x's. Okay. So they would, things would look very different on the board. Uh, for example, that top one I think would go y comma, I'd probably write it as y squared comma y, something like that. Okay. I'd be solving everything for, for x. So you just see y's. 